Yeah. Now, Dan, this is where we are going to get your opinion. So this is the referee's corner. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It only <laughs> took us a year to actually do this with Dan. So this is why, well, not why we have Dan, but let's use your expertise. Dan, obviously the first fight, I know it was a prelim fight between Tim Means and Alex Oliveira, where it was stopped um, after three minutes and 33 seconds of the first round. Tim Means um, need a grounded Alex Oliveira. Uh, a little bit of confusion uh, came in on the broadcast where Joe Rogan and Mike Goldberg uh, called in uh, Mark, Mark Ratner um, to clarify the rule set. Um, now, before we get you to speak on this, Dan, we're, we're sort of throwing this one at you a little bit. You have experienced a similar sort of thing. So the referee at the time was big Dan Morgliata. Basically, what happened was it was called in. Uh, Dan said it was an illegal strike. wasn't intentional. We did not know. And it was ruled a no contest. Um, now, I believe uh, Oliveira is appealing this. That it should be a sure, yeah, yeah, it should be a DQ. So before we're going to yeah. do that, Dan, we're going to lose you off the screen. We're going to tee you up a fight that you were the referee at Bama 25. I'm sure by saying this to you now, you might realise. So we're just going to shut up, let it play, and the audio. So for people listening, Dan will go through it in detail. Uh, we, I'm sure this is you remember this, Dan. So Dan will have to go through this in detail. But if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see it on the screen here. So uh, play away there, Rob. Courtesy of Bama. Courtesy of Bama.com, of course. Extension happens from one of these athletes, but they're both so skillful it's almost impossible to see coming. If I was Stapleton, I'd have another look at his man on the ground because, as you said, he got good position there. Ooh, possible low knee. We're going to get a, I think, a halt to the action. Oh, Stapleton is all over the place, his legs, and that was, I think, an illegal blow. What you've got to look at there is in those transitions from the floor to the feet. The big question is, first and foremost, are the feet planted? Are the soles planted? Yes, in Stapleton's case, they were. Then what you're looking for is a third point of contact, and that's one of the hands. I think that's what Daniel Mobahidi saw there. Yes, and Lapilus, he knows it. But more importantly, Stapleton is still on shaky legs. And if we watch here, Chris, you'll see it clearly. He slips here, then Lapilus comes in. Ooh, that looks really borderline. I want to see that one more time. That looked possibly to be a legitimate shot. I have to see that again in slow-mo. That looked really close. And, you know, when there's such a close level of timing... Stapleton's to... over. It's over. Stapleton has been called off. The, the medic was looking and saying, look in his eyes. He called Daniel Mulvahady over and said, look at his eyes here. Look at the eyes. And it's all over. And Lapilus thinks he's done it to win it. I think it's probably going to be either a DQ or a no contest, depending on if it was intentional or not. We're going to have to take a look at how that ruling goes, but what an unfortunate turn of events. It's unfortunate because it was so brilliantly poised, two such skillful men, so well balanced. He's saying, Lapalus is saying he's only two points gone. He's, he's adamant. And, the, and his corner are, are fighting the same cause. They're both saying the same thing. And Lapis is going, no, no. That was so close. I mean, even in slow-mo, it'd have to be slowed down again twice as much for me to make an accurate assessment. It looked really close. Let's take a look one more time. Here we go. And taking a look how this transpired. He went slips. High and slips. That's a legal shot. That's absolutely a legal shot. Man. And you take a look at the action in the heat of the moment. You've got to make as quick and honest assessment as you can. Here we go, another angle, Malk. Yeah, and he goes down and he comes. The hand comes up here. Chris. I think that that's got to be a legal shot. That's really unfortunate because obviously as that happened, Daniel Bobahidi was behind the two gentlemen as that transpired. It's a, it's a legal shot as far as we're concerned here in the fact that we feel that Lapilus has got a good cause here. But the referee has to make a split-second decision. And that is a great difficulty without instant replay in combat sports on the side of the officiators. What a great fight that was. Two men in their prime. Over to Buddy Johnson, and we'll get the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight ended 38 seconds of the second round. And our referee have disqualified the opponent in the blue corner due to an illegal knee to a downed opponent. Therefore, your winner and still lightweight champion of the world, Martin 50 Cal Stapleton. Okay, Dan, so there you are. That was Bama um, 25. Um, you were looking beautiful <coughs> on the screen, by the way. Um, so, Dan... Talk us through that. We obviously heard in the commentary booth there as well 
that they felt it was legal. So again, this is something that exactly the same almost exactly with the same, yeah. uh, exactly the same almost contradiction <laughs> in this one <laughs> sentence uh, but Goldie and Rogan were doing this on UFC and obviously that was Chris and Malcolm there on Bama um, so they were watching it they did a very that you have a couple of seconds to to see this to make your call so again just from the referee's perspective everything you've just seen there Dan and, and obviously remember from the night just talk is true the rule of grounded opponent well, obviously, in 2017, so the rule of grounded opponents changed um, slightly. So I'll go through that in a second. But obviously, at the time, and you think, you know, down the opponent is so where you can't knee or kick an uh, opponent to the head is anything but the soles of your feet on the ground. Okay. Um, so if you've got one hand on the ground, you're a down the opponent. You can't knee or be kicked to the head. If you've got a knee on the ground, you're a downed opponent, and sure as hell, if you've got two knees on the ground <laughs> in near enough a prayer position, you're a downed opponent. The problem was the French uh, Lapalis's corner, where, and the theme I've heard it in the commentary, is this misconception of three points. Okay, so they were like the the cornerman was shouting at me. Uh, he had two knees down, but his hands weren't down on the floor, and you're like. Okay, but that's not a downed opponent. Uh, that, that, sorry, that, that he's 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 a downed opponent. You can't knee him or kick him to the head. And they were like, yeah, but he didn't have his hands on the floor. And this is where the problem comes in. And you know, we always go through the rules talk. We go to the changing rooms, make sure they know the rules. And they knew they knew the rules. And you know, Lapalus is is a seasoned fighter. I believe it's his brother who's in the UFC as well. Who's made a couple of UFC appearances. So, and, and I like, like the commentator said, I had to make a split decision then, but it was 100% a downed fighter, a legal knee to the head. And, you know, if uh, Martin was able to continue, he saw me, I brought a doctor in, he checked his uh, eyes and his pupil, and what it was is one of his pupils were um, smaller than the other one, and the doctor, that's a sign of head trauma. Um, obviously, the, on the doctor's advice, I um, I called the fight off. If Martin was able to continue and the doctor said he is good to continue, um, I would have deducted two points off Laplace and the fight would have continued. Um, but obviously, clearly, obviously, because he couldn't continue, he ends up in DQ. So that's uh, that's old news. But the issue is, is the people still not knowing, not so much the com- yeah, commentators as well, um, but even even the cornerman is still to this day. You still have people coming up to you and not knowing what a downed or grounded opponent is. Um, and it is frustrating. Um, and uh, my advice to any fighter listening to this or any coaches listening to this, please watch the new rule sets of John McCarthy's that he's put out there on the um, uh, on the website on his homepage as well. It's give a clear example. Of, so now a downed opponent instead of being two feet on the floor, where people used to play the game of fingertips on the floor. So now if you put your hand on the floor, you can still get kneed or kicked to the head. Um, but some people still ask me questions. So if I put if I put a knee down and I've got a foot down and a hand down, I can still knee to the head. No. The minute that knee goes down, it's, it, it cancels everything out. You're a downed opponent. So anything but the soles of your feet and your hand, you're a downed opponent. And that's it. That's the new rule set. And, and it was frustrating seeing the UFC fight. Um, again, it calls into, contest, uh, it calls into question whether it was uh, on purpose, the knee, or was it accidental? You know, I personally, I thought it was on purpose. <laughs> you know, he's drawing the knee back and he threw two clean knees, and 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 he's right to to appeal and and to try to get a, a DQ. It's, it can't be a no contest because it wasn't accidental. One hundred percent. And again, like we're not. You know, we use that an example because it's you. We could speak about. It. Yeah. We always, we always find when we're talking to you, Dan. You, you know, you you obviously say, you know, I can only see I'm a fan as much as you are when it's not you yeah. involved in the cage. So when it was you refereeing, that's why we pulled this uh, this video out was yeah. because we knew you could speak about it directly because it was your call and what a call. I remember, I remember being there on the night if the sharp eagle eyed of you are looking at that video, which is available <laughs> on Bama's homepage on YouTube. Um, you will see me sitting in a beautiful grey jumper uh, cage side um, but I remember on the night when it happened there was a bit of you know when it stopped and you'll actually see me in the background explaining it to and or <laughs> what that, no no it was ground pound yeah and I'm going through it now I'll be honest when it happened on Friday I keep mailing I kept yep yeah, it was Friday uh, when it happened on Friday I was talking to you Rob and as it happened Ratner was going on I was saying oh I barely you know, and I sent you a message going well, did he not have three points down and I was looking at it so I Blaming myself when I was first watching it was 
yeah, three points. He didn't have three points. And then when I seen he was on both knees yeah. and or it wasn't so as if that's when I was like, oh yeah, right, I can't. So in the heat of the moment, you know, uh, I think people can react to it a certain way and that's exactly what Rogan and Goldberg do and that's why they called him Mark Ratner. Yeah. And I say Mark Ratner, I was like, oh fuck shit, I'm not too sure. You know what I mean? And he yeah. just sort of said... Yeah, but, but you saying that about Mark Ratner coming in, he could have, you know, let's play a bit of devil's advocate, he could have been not watching the fight, he could have yeah. been two seconds, his mind could have been somewhere else. All of a sudden, like you said, they brought him in and he's like, oh shit, what's going on? The person that made the quick call and you saw it, Damo Glotta, straight away, he was in there, no mate. And then you could even see Tim Means saying to him, oh, that's perfectly legal. And he was like, no brother, <laughs> he, he, he had a knee on the ground. He's, he's not a downed opponent. What upset me is some people going on the forums, <coughs> oh, with these new rule sets, that's perfectly legal. Yeah. Even with the new rule sets, yeah. It's not legal. And the new rule sets don't come into well, what is now January 2017, which we wasn't in at that time. So it wasn't. It wasn't legal. Yeah. It just it just frustrates me. People, I think, just uh, as much as it is our job to give out to the public and to the fighters to educate them. Um, obviously, there's plenty of referees out there who I look up to who, who do courses, etc. cetera. Um, you can go on there. But what I would like to see is every event, you know how they do the um, uh, the the rules, basic rules, you know, no, no uh, judging criteria, etc. Mm. Just have a snippet of a video, what a downed opponent is, what's illegal, what's not illegal, um, and so just so the fans know, so yeah. you, you don't, you know, so the people watching it on screen are not like, okay, what happened? The minute I walked out of that cage after that bama, a man of people asking me, oh, why did you stop the fight? What happened? Mm. But I was like, hold on, you must have been watching the fight. Yeah, but I don't understand. Why did you stop it? Why couldn't it continue? So it's just it's just a matter of educating fight, uh, educating fans as well as the fighters and, and the coaches. Yeah, the, I think the problem is the is the wording of the three points of contact, which, the, which but is, it's not in there. Yeah, but it's not we, the words not even in there. Someone's come up with that, yeah. and it's just kind of boom. The, I think, f- correct me if I'm wrong. The reason why that was brought up was because of the whole hand issue. Where if you have your salt on the on on the output, you put your hand down. That's three points of contact. So that's why they said yeah. it. But the great thing is that's gone now. So the, yeah. the whole warning and, and where that came from of three points of contact, that's gone because that's legal now. So it's yeah. if your knee is down, if any part that's not your feet are on the, the floor, your arse, whatever, anything, that's your down opponent. Yeah. So so the, like I said, the, the new rule set, anything but the soles of your feet and a hand or a fist on the floor, you're a down opponent. Yeah. That's it. So if I've got a fist down on the floor, I can get near to there. As soon as my other hand hit it, touches that yeah. floor or, or hands or palms on that floor... I'm safe, you know, and you know, it, it, there's got, don't get me wrong with this. I'm sure, again, in the rules talk, I've got, got to let the fighters know exactly what's, what's going on. There's going to be a few issues. I can see it, I can see it happening to not just me and other people. And I hope it doesn't, but hey, ref, I didn't know what rules we were fighting under. Then my advice to you is you better make sure <laughs> what rule sets you're fighting under, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say on the night, I remember, like I was saying earlier there, I remember when it happened and I was sitting talking to somebody and I tweeted out what a decision, um, no boys because you're on the show, but it was like, no, and it's. I don't mean you and Jen, same with, with Dan Morgliata, same with Herb Dean, Mario Yamasaki, uh, um, Steve Mazzagatti, <laughs> but uh, the same with all referees, you literally have less than a second to, to yeah. see that, take that in, absorb it and have a decision and make it you don't have the luxury of looking up to the big screen seeing a replay um no. so for that to, to, it's when you really think about it the pressure and what's involved on refereeing and i'm sure you've you felt over the years of doing it you might have had a few questionable ones yourself but it's great when you see it like a, a referee at a high level like yourself and they just you know to have the the not the sternness, but you know what I mean? The, to have the fucking yeah. balls to say, no, this is it, and that's it, done. And then I'm sure, because I, I know like Malcolm and Chris um, are great guys, and I know they certainly weren't saying it. They're looking at it, and they're giving their opinion at that time of it. Yeah. Um, again, so, again, you got you know they, they've mostly got someone in there, whole yeah, yeah, you know from the truck going, oh, explain this, do this, say yeah. this, you know, like, you know, it all gets mixed up. Yeah. But you know, I, I would, I would like to see, you know, if if there's not that a referee should ever explain um, themselves for the decisions they've made, whether it be right or wrong. You, you know, like you said, you got a split second to make yeah. that decision, whether whether you've made it a right one or a wrong one. You shouldn't have to explain yourself there and then because that's not the place to do it. Afterwards, yeah. So afterwards, you know, maybe, maybe someone should have um, got uh, got the reason why Dan 
um, stop the fight and why it was illegal, then he could have made it perfectly clear to everyone what the rule sets are and all that would have been squashed. They used to do that years ago in football. They used to interview the referees. Yeah, I think it's a great match. idea. Yeah, I do. Like, I, I find it, it doesn't necessarily have to be Dan Murgley either, but it could be like. You know, there well, could I like be the way done the uh, Mark Ratner. Obviously, he got it wrong. Yeah, but it's yeah, good but that they, they bring gotta, him in. Yeah, for, they could have like somebody speaking on the behalf of the referees who were officiating that night. Let's. It could be Dan Morgan. Other people could be talking about all the referees who were <coughs> on duty that night, yeah. and they go, "Well, hey, you know, such and such done this, and why was that?" You can go, "Well, the real is that, 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 that." Yeah. And it'd be interesting, just like yeah. a scrum, like with the fighters, literal five minute thing. I think it'd be a great idea, and it, it clears it up for everyone because it was weird. It, it the internet blew up the other night when it happened. Everyone was talking about it back and forth, back and forth. I met you straight away going do you see this fight what's the story um, yeah. but no it is and, and, and like I said that's that's why I was delighted when we had that footage because it was very similar to yeah. that it was an intentional knee um, it was exactly almost the same it thing. was exactly almost yeah. the same but, but again like I said with, with that virtually one, the whole identical. thing <laughs> but it was when, 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 like I said when, when the corner men go oh but he didn't have his hands down that's what frustrated me the most yeah, I'm like yeah. Like, I shouldn't be explaining this to you like right now yeah, when yeah. you're in a title <laughs> fight. You should have, you know, you should have known that. That's your, yeah. that's your job. I'm doing my job. You're doing my. But what people just want to point out, what people don't realize, not on all shows, but most shows, especially the shows I work on, and if I've got a team with me, we always do a debrief, whether it be from the judges, whether it be from the, uh, the sometimes the commissioners, something they've done, or we do. Oh, you know, why did you make that decision? Why did you stop the fight then? Um, you know what made you give the this, so you try to explain yourself of why you gave them gave the decisions you did or why you made the decisions or the choices that you did, which I think is good, yeah, especially when you do it in a team. You just get a chance to explain yourself and to make people understand why you made made the decisions that you did. But like I said, it'd be nice to get a referee's point sometimes on the night. Maybe like you said, maybe not Dan's or even on the night of Bama. Some, I mean, I had, I had mm. not gonna name no names. I had people going, oh, you know. How can we stop the fight? It's just educating people. It'd be nice yeah. to educate and people so, exactly what what the what the rule is in the sport we're in. And sometimes you just have to think logically as well. Like if I'm uh, sitting down on my ass on my back in guard, my yeah. hands aren't on the floor, <laughs> but I'm still grounded. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like yeah. when you were a kid playing lava. Remember, you weren't allowed to stand on your carpet. Yeah, just because your hands aren't on the floor. Isn't if it? your feet aren't on the floor, motherfucker, you're downed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, look, thanks for Dan again breaking that down. We apologise for throwing that video at you because we might have caught you unawares right. with it. But um, we like to do that. Keep you on your fucking toes. <laughs> 